This sorrowful French song is one of the few manuscripts to survive from the 13th century to the present day. The trombone began to emerge 200 years after that was written. An instrument just like this was depicted on a fresco in a chapel in Rome, completed in 1490. And we see payments made in the accounts of the royal courts of the English court to sackbut players. A sackbut was one of the words used to mean trombone. It came from French origin sacabouche, and most of the players in England were from the continent of Europe, from Germany or Dutch players. We were prized for our ability to play every dynamic and every pitch. This meant we were extremely useful in either replacing a voice or accompanying the human voice. Purcell, alas, wrote nothing specifically for trombone, but it seems like a poignant time to play a song that celebrates love for this fairest isle. Vienna was one of the few cities in which professional trombone playing maintained its presence throughout the 18th century. Wagenseil was a very well respected and prolific composer working in the court there. We are sure that Mozart, the young Mozart, will have heard his music, possibly even this concerto written for the alto or tenor trombone um, at the time. It's in alto clef and there is a lot of debate about whether it should be performed on the tenor or alto. But I like the clarity of the alto sound in the context of this concert of mainly tenor pieces.
to the final piece in this concert, which is Movement 3 from the Secret House Sonata by John Kenny. He wrote this for me in year 2001, and it's groundbreaking in many ways, not least the multiphonics, which you hear especially in this movement, using the vocal sounds and the trombone sounds simultaneously. Um, this movement has subtitled Dark House Donegal and it starts with a poem John wrote having visited his family Croft in Ireland where his ancestors are from and he saw it all fallen down literally since the last member of the family was taken out of the place and it inspired him to write this final movement in the sonata that looks at all the aspects of house and home. Stones shaped by wind and ice. Loaded creels on aching sturdy backs, stomped for weary miles. Patient eyes, gnarled hands laid each one to rest, no cutting tool or mortar. Roof ribs of blackened bog oak, reed thatch, a yellow living skin. One small window and a door set in wall, a man's arm deep, dark house. Soot blackened, kettle and cauldron straddle a turf fire, lit by long dead hand. Rekindled each day, a dawn red kiss, passed down through generations. This flames flicker, life breath to Croft. House home to man, beast and vermin, crawler, spinner, winged and singer at the hearth. Love, birth and death revolving, never plenty, one time famine, endless toil, yet always laughter, pipes and fiddle hid on rafter. Life patterns knit by seasons passing, myth, faith and family formed a fabric, rich and self-sustaining, unraveled at the flick of a switch. Irresistible images of the new world flood and overpower the old which poverty held at bay. So now the whitewashed walls bulge out, thatch fallen in, growing tufts and moss. A house no more. A gentle mound to cover memory, the passing of a time and of a people. Thank you. 
Oh. Mm-hmm. 